Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Data Cloud Now. I'm currently in the DCN studio in San Mateo, California, where I am delighted to be joined by Tony Ko, Managing Director, Global Data Analytics and AI at Slalom. Tony, such a pleasure to be with you today. What a privilege to be here. Thank you for having me. Tony, your vision is a world in which each person has the opportunity to love their work and life. How are you using data to make this a reality for your customers? Great question. I think we often see our professional lives and personal lives as opposite sides of the spectrum. But there's a commonality between the two, which is the human element of it. If we think about what people actually are looking for, they just want to be heard, they want to be valued, and they want to be seen. And so if we focus on that, it brings clarity into what we actually want to bring to our employees, our customers, and the general public. At Slalom, we think about customers at two different layers. First is the layer where executives and organizations are actually engaging us to help them define and execute and bring their strategies and initiatives to life. And the second layer is around their customers. Who are they serving? So thinking about airline industries, it's the traveler who's trying to get back home to their family, or it's the patient for a life sciences company who's thinking about their health outcomes and living a, a vibrant life. So thinking about how data comes into play for those stakeholders, let's stay with the traveler for a bit. It's the response time and the relevance of the information that you want to bring to that traveler that makes it feel like that individual is being heard, seen, and valued, depending on what you can suss out from their priorities and understanding where their current situation is. Providing that information in a timely and relevant manner is it requires data, and that's how you make that come to life. Same thing with patients. You think about the relevancy of their history, their family priorities, and their life priorities. And that timeliness and relevance is all dependent on the data that you have access to. And then thinking about the stakeholders from a customer perspective, the employees of a company. I mean, let's face it, employees work with a company because they believe in purpose and vision of that specific company. And the closer that you could bring that employee to, to those direct outcomes, the reason why that company exists in the first place, the more meaning you bring to their lives. And how do we do that? With data, powering tools, platforms, and software to take away from anything that is mundane or, or further away from the actual direct impact so that they could go home thinking, yes, I made a difference in, in this individual's life. Thank you so much, Tony. I'm so glad you mentioned vision and purpose because at Slalom, your purpose is to help people and organizations dream bigger, move faster, and build a better tomorrow for all. How does the data cloud's ease of use help you meet those objectives for your customers? Access to data is everything, uh, especially in this age where AI is having its moment. And we all know AI is powered by data. So let's first think about the promise and potential of AI in the world and making sure that people could dream bigger, move faster, and create better tomorrows for all. Um, we're starting to see, and I fully predict that, every individual, regardless of whether they're part of a team with significant budgets, or if they're a part of a nonprofit, or individually at home, everyone's going to have access and desire to create some sort of AI agent to help them do the things that they want to do with greater impact. And so we're already seeing a lot of companies, organizations, and teams enjoy the, the productivity gains and efficiency gains to the to order of 40 to 65% efficiency gains. Wow. When you do that, you're creating space and mind share and capacity to think about different things. Because the point of this technology, right, is not to do more of the same just faster. It's to fundamentally think about why is it that we're doing what we're doing? And if you create that space to challenge some of the conventional constraints that we accept as realities, we start to see the evolution of our purpose. So think about at an industry level, if you're, um, for example, a travel industry, you may go from being the holder of an itinerary to a, an entity that helps the world become smaller for individuals and groups together. If you're thinking about healthcare, healthcare to me is highly reactive depending on the illness, the condition of the patient, or you know, there may be some preventative measures that you also help with. But if you think about that as a baseline or foundation uh, that everybody has access to, then you start to think about what does that proactive nature of that industry look like? Is it still healthcare or is it life care? 
And so the promise and potential is huge. There's two significant limiters to that. One is the user's ability to adapt and adopt these technologies and the changes. And we're getting better at that. We're, we still need to improve quite a bit there. But the other limiter is access to data. If you don't have access to the relevant data, you're not going to be able to realize that potential. So lowering the barrier of entry and access to data repositories, leveraging data cloud, is going to be critical to realizing that potential and value. Great to hear the impact the data cloud is having across Slalom's ecosystem. I want to dive into Slalom internally for a moment and a massive congratulations to you and the entire team for an eighth consecutive year. Slalom was one of Fortune 100 best companies to work for. How are you using data internally to deliver an ideal working environment for your employees? First of all, thank you. We are uh, very honored and humbled by the recognitions. And we also recognize that th we still have a long ways to go to make sure that we live up to that promise. Um, data has made our lives easier in tremendous uh, aspects. So you know we're a Snowflake customer. Um, we have touch points and data points that we capture from our employees throughout the year. You know, we have the annual surveys that are industry standards. We have some proprietary surveys that we do. In addition to that, different touch points where we capture the preferences, the desires, and the aspirations of our, our, our employees. And the ability to marry that information with their history, their activity, the opportunities they've re received before, as well as external information from the data uh, marketplace, which also Snowflake enables, has been a really great boost to how we advise people leaders as well as employees. For people leaders, we will leverage that information to say, here's how you level up how you are as a people leader so that you can be a better person for that specific employee. And for employees, we'll use all that information to say, here are all the opportunities you're not taking advantage of. Here's all the resources you may not be aware of. And here's some of the contact points that you should reach out to to get some additional information, additional opportunity, and understand how you could have equity recognition, advancement, uh, and, and a meaningful, thriving career, that's all. I love that leveling up. I want to circle back to a topic that you mentioned earlier, and that's AI, specifically generative AI. How will this play a role in the working environment and everyday life? It's going to play a huge role. Um, a quick personal story, this time last year, my wife and I engaged with generative AI to uh, create a children's book for our four-year-old at the time wow. on how to brush your teeth properly and why. And we, we read that book to her every night for a couple of weeks. And before you knew it, she was interested, proactive, and wanting to do it herself. Now, at four Mission years accomplished. Old, <laughs> not quite yet. Uh, at four years old, you can't quite get all of the, the, the aspects of properly brushing your teeth, but just the fact that she was engaged and wanting to do that, it was amazing. And so that opened up the realm of possibilities for me and my wife. While there's this benefit, there's also a little bit of risk, which is the gap that we see between the expectations and understanding of what AI could do. About, I would round numbers, 80% of the population who's paying to AI today wasn't paying attention to it in 2022. And so their expectation is at the highest. Their understanding is not quite there yet. So we often talk about Gartner's hype cycle. They're, they're, they're in great risk of um, being disappointed of what AI could do for them, unless we help them refactor their use cases or what their expectations are by raising their level of understanding. But fortunately, there's been a population within the world where they've gone through the hype cycle and are coming out the other end. And it's amazing to see that that population is leaning in to help educate and close that gap so that we don't have an AI winter that we saw after the first attempt of autonomous vehicles for the general public. So I'm really excited. There will be a population of AI agents in both our personal lives as well as within our work lives. Yes, it's going to be hard to manage, but it's going to be really awesome to see what that, how that impacts all of us. Tony, an exciting next chapter for you in Slalom. Before we wrap here today, as you look out on the coming months, what's your primary focus? My primary focus is 
how do we actually have something to show for all the investments and attention and mindshare this space is getting? In 2023, we saw a lot of all of our customers, all the organizations be scrappy and resourceful and figure out where does that budget come from so that we experiment and learn with this breakthrough technology. In 2024, we're starting a new fiscal year for, for the general uh, vast majority of the companies. And we're seeing commitments of nearly 40, 60 plus million dollars in 2024, specifically for AI. And these are companies who had zero in terms of planned budget for AI in the past and in, in previous years. This is great because we're gonna see significant advancements, but we should also be cognizant that that means there's an executive who's gonna be held accountable for having something to show for it. And so at Slalom, our teams are hyper-focused on making sure that we have the tools, the methodologies and frameworks so that we could funnel these investments and budgets to things that are gonna show return and intangible results so that we don't lose the engagements that we have and the mind share and attention that we have of the board, advisors, and, and stakeholders of the companies. Tony, I really enjoyed our time. Thank you so much for joining me in the Data Cloud Studio. Thank you for having me. And thank you to the audience for watching. I'm Ryan Green, and this is Data Cloud Now.